Let's check here then. Let's see. Okay, it's about halfway because I would really like to just get that done so we could actually go and do something else. Ah, more health items. That's fine, I guess. Who's this? Roy's pawn shop. Fast gas for faster times. And there's also garbage in here. Ooh. I can take those though. I don't think I want to use them. Water lock out of order until Wednesday 7.15 a.m. Okay. Who are you? Um, okay. You seem to have a knife of some sort. Man of water lock. Good day to you officers. A burly man hangs out by the waterlock, carrying up a generous serving of salami with an old hunter's knife. His eyes are fixed on a man stranded on the other side of the waterlock, and an enor enormous billboard that has fallen down into the canal between them. First things first, what are you doing here, man on the waterlock? My friend Barry, the butcher, is stuck on the other side of the waterlock, and keeping him company and eating his salami. <laughs> like this guy over here. You. I understand. From the corner of your eye, you see a man in a yellow shirt and grey overalls waving at you from across the canal. He seems disappointed about the records on the waterlock and the salami. The man on the waterlock picks the skin of a slice of a salami and takes a sizable bite. Very good stuff. Anything I can do for you, officer. Do you know what caused this racket, point at the smashed billboard in the canal? I wasn't here to witness it, but those look like tire tracks on that sign. Weird, huh? Then again, plenty of daredevil drivers in Revenchal. That might have to do with us, considering we remember doing something bad with that car. I don't know. <sighs> the worst daredevil devil and driver sound ominous to you. Yeah, because we've ourselves been an uh, ominous uh, daredevil driver before, clearly. Too bad, it also takes a year and a day to repair anything around here, especially a waterlock. The rest of the coast is closed off till then. Hmm. Do you know what's future down the coast? Well, there's the vision villas and abundant wish market, a bizarre church. Not much use to the congregation, though. There always seems to be something wrong with it. He thinks for a moment. Yeah, not really much else, just bombed out ruins. Can I have some of that salami? Point at his food. Sure thing, he cuts off a slice of salami. Hey, I've got full health then, thank you. Want some too, officer? He turns to the lieutenant. The lieutenant ponders the offer for a moment, then decides to go for it. Why not? He takes a slice of salami from the man and shoots on it. Thank you very kindly, that was very nice. Right, bye then. Enjoy your day here. And the salami. Hmm. Well, this is a pawn shop. Might as well visit the pawn shop. Certainly. See a container you can't open. Equip a pry bar. Hmm. True. Welcome to the pawn shop. Thank you. Some kind of machine, an antique cash register. Bust of a woman, the plague simply says day. In a dark film projector whirring away. And uh, what's in this direction? Mostly military wear with a few more eccentric fashion thrown in. Okay, sort of street light. A typical Martinez street light sits amongst the assorted floor and table lamps. Let your case run over the street light. The light pole has been carefully cut and the wiring has been redone and attached to a sundered indoor plug. The light passes faintly, but persistently. Is that a street light? Yes, officer. As you can see, it's in a perfect working order. Where did you get this? It was brought to me to be altered. He leans in so the pawn program wouldn't hear. We're not here to investigate the theft of city property. He pauses studying the light and adds, You have to admit it's rather clever what he's done with it. How much for the street light? 700 real, a bargain, I dare say. Hmm. 
Even taking into account the risk of obtaining the light, it seems a bit steep. There also is the matter of rewiring, but the most important transformation is the light's placement among ordinary indoor fixtures, which has suggested its morphological field. The light became suitable for use inside the home just a few days ago. Well, <laughs> I have 574, so yeah, that's the amount of money I have. Yeah, no. Thank you. Not really able to afford that. Not, not quite. It's just a little bit off. Nick knack stand. You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. Some on horseback, others in racks, others yet in bright blue uniforms. All are stern and unyielding in their duty. Hmm. Try to find something pretty and cool here. Then use it to win her back. Aha. Win her back. Oh, uh, sure. Let's try this. <laughs> Dig up a truly cool figure in the box under the table. Yes, I did it. Why? What's this? A headless man riding a horse? A headless man wearing futuristic tracksuit trousers that say Wall? What is this? Show it to the shopkeeper. Oh, that's the headless Wall rider. Who? The Headless Wall Rider. It's an urban legend about a man who rides the streets of Revergil Sport in a wall tracksuit. As you can see, he's missing his head. He points to a decapitated figurine. 50 cents. Bargain priced. I'll throw the tiny cap too. I think he's looking for it or something. That's part of the story has many interpretations. Sure, I'll buy it. I'll, I'll waste money for that. Did I mention that this vicar is supposed to be lucky? Always carry it with you, he grins. Uh, medium succession. That was a very smooth salesman's grin that almost comes off as earnest. You should learn from him. And what did I mean by win her back? Yes, by something nice, a figurine. This sounds off. You shouldn't trust this guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> my volition side and Inland Empire are like completely opposite but hey I bought the one that I actually found very cleverly so I'll inspect this though big man on big horse clad in lamera armor and carrying flintlocks the kind that would mow down the line of enemy soldiers in the blink of an eye point at the knights on horseback who are they Franzo Nerigerian knights he looks at the dusty figurines in the dim light I used to be very serious about these guys a long long time ago apparently Inspect the blue uniforms. They're not all blue. These figurines also wear gold coats and caps complemented by orange trousers. They are variously posed, wielding two swords and rifles with bayonets. Blo point at the blue figurines. Are these royalist soldiers? Which ones? The man spears from the class box. Ah, oh, those. Yes, they are. I find the paint job a bit gaudy, but children like bright colors indiscriminately. Inspect the vicarines in racks. This set of soldiers isn't meant to look impressive. A few have rifles, but most of them carry pistols. Some even shovels and tall sticks. Point at vicarines in racks. Are these even soldiers? You're probably talking about the revolutionaries, yes? The man behind the glass answers. Yes, they are soldiers. Revolutionary soldiers. I think their poverty has been exaggerated for effect. When you place them next to the royalists, it doesn't seem like they could possibly win. Mm. It's meant to give people hope, even we can do it. Maybe. Challenging success of the Inland Empire. He seems to have his own take on the conflict played out in Perpetual by these toys. Might be interesting to find out what it is. Hmm. What do you think? I wish I was more nuanced. I don't like either set very much, to be honest. But there are many pa parents among my customers. He seems to have his own take. Yeah. Well, I don't know what that would be. Rhetoric. Hey, pst. Look around. Pst, hey you. Who, me? 
Yes, you world on the street is you're ready to start building communism again. Uh, how come there's a word on the street? You keep saying things like down with the burgers, eat the rich, shadowize the landowners, impale all people who have more than 25 real in their pocket. I didn't say that. Literally murder all human beings regardless of their political beliefs, that kind of stuff. Uh, I've said some mightily left-wing things, but none of those. Oh yes, the mask of ambivalence. Don't deny, you're about to rip it off and reveal the monstrous seven-eyed lamp of global communism and will devour the masticate mankind. No. Everyone see that, so tell me, do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder, builder or do we get right down to it? Wait first, what's this communism even about? According to you. Failure. It's about failure. Failure. Yes, abject failure. Total irreversible defeat of on all fronts. Absolutely fanguished, beaten, curb, stomped and pissed on. Until you came along. You will reverse the fortune of the workers of the world. Uh, you alone against every living thing, against every human alive. 800 trillion real in the hands of an impossible, well-organized ruling class. Power in city blocks of <laughs> bank men who have the ears of prime ministers, million-headed armies of nations and the love of your own mother. You against the atom, the charm and the spin where the full world failed. Matter failed to bend the human will, humans who failed to get out of the bed and tie its laces. You alone, single-handedly, will rebuild the dreams of the working class. You are the last communist. Now, get to work, comrade. No. It's too tiring, I don't have uh, it in me. I'm beat down and broken. Very well, I guess no one will build communism then. Well, the workers, man, it's over. Unless anyone has objections. Uh, did someone mention cocaine? Are we doing cocaine? No, I'm sure I heard someone say co cocaine is system. <laughs> anyone? Anyone else? There's no one. Volition success. There's one. What should I do then? You should build communism precisely because it's impossible. <laughs> Oh my god, I... but communism is pretty much impossible to actually build, well the... Uh, I guess that makes sense that I should try to build it just because it is impossible. Fine, you convinced me, I guess. I'll, I'll try to build this communism that is impossible to build, as in I will never build it actually, but fine. <sighs> sure, roll up your sleeves and start building communism then. Sure, fine, whatever. Oh yeah, get the fire and squats and animal weapons ready. I don't wanna do those. <laughs> Wait, what? Fire and squats? You didn't say anything about those. Don't like to back out now. You can't make an omelette without breaking a few million eggs. <laughs> Roll your sleeves up and breathe in a pristine air. Finish thought. That's not a good thought. <laughs> Massovian socioeconomics. Minus two to visual calculus. Looks like reaction. Emperor resource bonus. People think communism was some crazy idea that had its uh, come up and 40 years ago, a fever that took the world never to return again. They were right until he woke up today. A spiritual corpse responds only to the call of Commodore Red, prostitutes, and Cross Mosul. For him, communism is still a thing. He still single handedly raise, uh, will raise the commune of 02 from the oceanic trends, where it has been resting, covered in coast and seaweed. He is the big communism builder. Come, witnesses attempt to rebuild communism end of year, 51. That's uh, not actually gonna happen, but sure. Sure, totally. The boom boxes on the shelf look well loved and well traveled. Chip tent, they stare at you with the unblinking eyes of the tape reels. Okay, stand on the tips of your toes to see more. One especially catches your eye, deep gold and amber plastic with a big gold handle on top. A classic boom box that says, Zero 08 approved. Uh, this is you, gold and orange, a sunset suit. Okay. Interface in easy success. Just make sure it works before you buy it. Mm. Shopkeeper, the 08 appro uh, approved machine here. 
as the Harman Havovsi VO2, made in Vesper designed in Seoul. He says, place all real to real format, 2mm, 8mm, 12mm. It's even got a little radio in there, it'll set you back uh, 12 real. Are you sure this is all in working order? Absolutely, I've tested each one myself with recordings of speeds, found sounds, and music forms of variety of genres. Even though he grimaces, I don't really like music. Hmm, could it come in handy in my police work? If police work means playing tape, sure, you can use it for that, or any other time you'd need to play a tape. That'd be useful then, like at a beach party with sand and sun and seagulls dancing to a prince. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for clearing that up, Roy. For well, sure, it's a consumer device with professional applications. Well, I wouldn't be able to afford it at the moment anyways. Equip this to play tapes. It does sound like a good idea to get something like that at some point. But, uh, not right now. But hey, we got this. Figure inset headless phone rider price. 0 0.42, if I would want to now sell it. Whatever is my purpose with it, but hey, who knows, maybe it would be coming in handy at some point. I see offices of the RCM in my pawn shop. The man at the counter turns to you slowly. What can I do for you? He asks. His courtesy is not insincere, but he prefers being alone with his projector, just watching the movement of light across the walls of the shop. Hmm. Sorry, I feel like I'm interrupting you. Oh no, not at all. I, oh, I guess I haven't had many customers lately. RCM or otherwise. He blesses a smile. Who are your customers usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake, people who are terminally bored. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. Hmm. Quite the collection indeed. It keeps me entertained. His attention is drawn once more to the play of light and shadow on the walls behind you. Entertained? He might be high if he is on what? I'm not gonna do this stuff. Mm. <laughs> Carried by cops. Uh, you might be able to aid our investigation. I doubt it, but I can try to answer any questions you may have. Know anything about the recent hanging? I do my best to keep my distance from all manner of butchery. Bad for business, bad for everyone. Could you help me get a corpse out? <laughs> the ghost behind the hostel, I assume. He looks into the swirling lights, then to you. I don't have a truck with a mounted platform or anything of a sort myself. Ask around the harbor. There might be some workers there who willing to help. That's all I've got. Uh, yeah, dancing colors. He's just looking at them. Um, <laughs> at least I will come and ask here if I need to, if I don't find the con at some point soon. There's something I'd like to sell. Let me have a look. No, not gonna do that. <laughs> mm. Well, I could sell this, I guess. The postcard of Grand Quaron. Ill-advised residential area overlooking the Chamra Quarter. Mm, yeah. I could probably do that. I'm not gonna do it for this. But okay, these are for that sort of a purpose. But yeah, I guess I can do that. Okay, nothing more then. Not sure if that was a good idea, but I can try with that thing nonetheless. How far is my thought? It's pretty far at the moment, so I probably could be starting to head backwards, as in back into that location. So I can try to see if I can do that goddamn stuff. 
<sighs> it's not like I can do it yet, but it's not that far off anymore. I do kind of wonder how often the white check uh, thinks that you can try recharge, as in how often you can try them. At one point I ex especially got the information that, hey, now you can go and retry once that you had tried to do. But is that usually how it works or not? That I do not know. Okay. Uh, tire tracks leading onto the roof. The slush and rain has almost washed them off. Hello, you man there. Life! It doesn't need to be a struggle! He covers his mouth to hide a burp. Oh, I'll be with you in a moment, officer. Let me just finish my sandwich. Talk to Angry Old Rene first. He nods to his partner. Okay. Stop complaining and hurry up. Have you no shame? Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape? <laughs> the man says to his partner. Rene, you're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, alright? This uh, one is still shooting on his sandwich, but yeah, I noticed that he was throwing a ball into here. I am trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old, I can see <laughs> that. We're both old. Now, stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl! Okay. <laughs> um, these manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first, ask questions later. Uh, shouldn't I ask what game it is first? No, you got this. There's the ball, you're the game. No, I, I definitely will not try to do this. Plus two from acting without hesitation. Um... Um, um, <laughs> plus two from acting without hesitation. Otherwise, I wouldn't do that well. Sure, let's try it. L let's try it. Sure, let's just try. How badly this will fail for me. Ch check success, okay. Uh, okay. No, you got this. There's the ball. You're the game. You are immediately surprised by the ball's lack of fate. No matter, you'll make it work. God, this is it. You feel a familiar tremble of excitement and adrenaline that precedes every victory. Time has frozen. Feel the ball. The gold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it. Probably a sponsored ball. Yours would only be covered with pumps of learning and scars of victory. Already your muscles are adjusting to the weight and nervous systems calibrating until you and the ball have merged into a single entity. The man ball is ready. <laughs> Take in the surroundings. A chilly breeze ruffles your hair as you stand there, feet firmly planted. All sounds, smells, even the wind, everything fades until the only thing left is the union of man and ball. There is a time for last glance inwards. Who am I? An embodiment of pure motion, a fine-tuned locomotor running at maximum efficiency. Some would still say you're a cop, but I guess we're beyond that <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, we are. The inertia can be con contained no more than a bullet leaving a gun. Let's go. Be the bullet. Um, did we have to throw the ball into there? Mede! The old soldier yells in outrage. Porter the Mede! What the hell is your problem? Why did we have to throw it into the freaking water? Why? That's the worst! I thought that we would just throw into here! Aww. Problem? I don't understand. You vandalize our game, son, he tries to calm himself. We can't play Petanga with five bulls. Petanga, I know exactly what you're playing into. He didn't try to get as close as this as possible. Sorry, an honest mistake, are we good? No, we are not good, Kotamit, a vein on his forehead is bulging alarmingly. We want our pool back. Take it easy, Rene. The jolly one tries to defuse the situation. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? No harm done. 
Of course, there's some done, you orange slug. The heel of his scarily boots slam the ground. You always a goddamn pool. Ah, you are an officer of a law with way more important things to worry about than pullers. Don't take this crap. Uh, okay, I will try to fix this. Accept the task. Good, he nods. Mistakes are forgiven when men at least try to right their wrongs. I believe you will try. Now, why did you approach us? <sighs> Just talk. It all smooth things over. All people like attention. I saw the statue of... Uh, no. Um... Do you know anything about the man hanged in the backyard of whirling in rocks? Unfortunately, I don't, he shrugs. Unlike most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement, but this affair has passed me by completely. And most of the locals? In Martinez, the union is the law, so you can really blame them. But you don't have a problem with cops. Cop is a pretty term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admi admire an effort to bring order to our streets. So again, you don't know anything. If I knew, I would not be afraid to tell you. I simply don't. I am an old man, not a coward. The daily business of the riffraff no longer concerns me. This is a man with a lot of past, but little present, and almost no future. I saw a statue of Philip III near the roundabout. Ah, oh, yes, King Philip III on his steed. Reminder of what Revanchal once was. Oh, absolutely, he smiles as if relieving a pleasant memory at the mercy of a cocaine snorting tyrant who emptied the treasure so he could sleep on a bed of gold. Hmm? Cocaine? Cocaineum? Sounds like our kind of king. And just imagine what kind of cocaine a king would have had. A superpower, feared and respected, a testament to what his country can. Beyond the leadership of a true king, someone who knows how to rule. Um... How should a true king rule? Decisively. Decisively. Without fear of offending the sensibilities of the frail and weak-minded among his subjects. This is something the insurgents never understood. Mm. Seems to me a leader should take care of his people before himself. A nation is only as strong as its leader. That's why it was such a madness to try to. Don't get started on that again. What happened happened. There is some word in his voice. He's heard this rant many, many times before. The Garabiner doesn't reply, but his entire being communicates unbreakable resolve. No one and nothing can change this man's mind. He is a rich as they come. Still in that antique uniform, it's a symbol for him. No, I don't want to ask about cocaine. Right. The old man stands tall and proud, looking at you inquisitively. Uh, you seem to be playing in a crater. Yes, the man knows. The Terran here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. Do you know what created it? I do. He nods straight on his back. Fire from heavy artillery. <sighs> okay, it's a crater left by artillery fire, but why? Why what? Why was heavy artillery used? Because that's what happened when Communards hijacks your country, execute your supreme leadership and turns your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. <sighs> mm. Did you use artillery fire against them? Sadly, no. I was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. It was the foreigners. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly, Vokot leaked. He added, squeezing a pole in his fist. Shouldn't have fought dirty. Like they did with their... Should have fought dirty, I guess. Like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist woman strapped to sharp nail bombs. We didn't, though. And we lacked caliber. God bless him. On the suzerain's cannons simply weren't big enough. They should have chosen a place away from people and buildings, but of course they don't. This place is the damn beachhead, son, he says, pointing at the bay. They had to soften the commies up first. The beachhead? Yes, he nods, inspecting you with some disdain. The military coordinated ambitiously, landing to take back Revan Shore. 
Eventual lack of historic knowledge trampling, a sign of mental deterioration in the preceding generations. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Rachel during Operation Dead Blow 08. The other two are off in Stella, Maurice and the Delta, he points to the north east. Not thoughtfully and turned to look northeast. This here is blood ground where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, he says, looking down to the soil. We're playing petang on their mangled corpses. Blood ground. The other one shakes his head. You got old Reneko in there, like he isn't an angry enough already. Ah, that explains all the war damage. Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on this city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. There's a strange gleam in his eyes. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Mortinus they keep as a monument. A dark shadow runs across his face, and now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault, the jolly man marks. You be the coalition, the bunch of whoever you wanna play, never finish the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course, they still hold influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... He stops with sentence and turns to you. What do you think? Mm. Foreign powers cleaned up our mess and now they rule us. Shake your head in shame. I'm sorry it had to be them. He looked down at the his boots. After eight years of firing those hyenas, spoiling gants for food and drinking piss in the mountains. It, I would have preferred if the right honorable King Quilliam returned to Revanchol, or even if the damn clown Frizzle had risen from the grave and let us. Hadly, that was not the case. This royal failure fades heavily on him. Mm. Instead, all that is just holy and beautiful in the world was swiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere, foreign influence, peddling carpets, and stupid music on the radio, he cites. This is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the rule of suzerain with. I don't know about that, but... Who was this Rizal? Damn Rizal. He was the king we would couldn't protect. The carabineers failed him and the crown. The old veterans forced silent and messages his chest. He died in the hands of the whole poloi in a very public execution. You mentioned Kilium? A true king in poet blood and mind. Let Revenchol before Rizal. He would have been better, but the damn commies drove him into exile. Hmm. What's exactly a suzerain then? The suzerain is the king. Has everyone forgotten already? He then slowly nods and says to himself, They've forgotten already. Soon they will forget everything. Him too. Then he chooses anger over men and collie. Some expo experience though. It's no use talking to you. You were still in daddy's balls when it happened. When we took our last stand against the field and rode and carried straight into gunfire. Um, through the pole in the sea. Yeah, my composure is too low now. Uh, yeah, that's uh, no point. Thank you for your time, leave. No point me trying to do that. Now it's so close that I'm just like, eh, come already. Be internalized. What's this? Enormous pole's worth of a real man. <laughs> Mail collection box. This post Levanture mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. Closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. Okay. Good mail deliver box, but the box. Sure. <laughs> the box seems happy. Sure. Bye. Bye, box. <laughs> the box seems happy. I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. I wonder if I have anything more that I could talk to you now. 
Stuck in the rain in a traffic jam, man. What's on your mind? Nah. You were a nice guy, though. With your sing and uh, singing and everything of a sort. To be continued with Girarusha next time in Disco Elysium. See you all then.